Hi, I welcome you back to this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with StatPro. I'm Sudeep and I'm a structural engineer and the leader of the StatPro technical team at Bentley Systems. I have been working on StatPro at Bentley for 17 years and prior to that, I have six years of experience as a structural designer. So do not miss out on this opportunity of learning StatPro with clear concepts from me, who knows StatPro in and out, and who has worked with the development and testing teams of StatPro and have supported Stat users around the globe to solve the structural engineering problems. Now, we have completed discussing about the assignment of the standard hot roll sections from Stat's database. However, for heavy constructions, the hot roll sections are not enough to carry the loads, even if we opt for special sections like double angles or double channels. In such cases, custom sections are needed to be made out of plates by welding them together. In this session, we will see how we can define those steel sections. But before we go forward, please take a moment to hit the subscribe and the like button if you appreciate my effort in bringing this series to you. As I've said, for carrying heavy loads, section needs to be built out of plates. So let us say that we intend to build up a white flange or an I-shaped section. And let us cut out three parts from a plate, the first part for the top flange, the second part for the web, and the third part for the bottom flange. Now all these parts are assembled together to form the white flange section. And the assembled parts are then connected by welding. Similarly, other shapes of sections like channel, tube, angle, etc. can also be built by assembling the plate elements. Now the question is, how can we define these sections in Start Pro? Well, let us find out. Now let us say that we want to define a custom white flange section with the width of the flanges as 300 millimeters, the thickness of the flanges as 50 millimeters, let the total depth of the section be 500 millimeters and let the thickness of the web be 30 millimeters. Of course, the dep depiction here is not to the scale. Now let us see how we can define the custom section that we want in Strat Pro. So for this, we would need to go to the specification option from the main menu bar. So click on the specification option and then let us click on the user table option in the beam profile menus and click on the drop down switch and click on the user table manager you will see that a box titled new user table has popped up the section type has been selected as white flange now we would want to define a custom white flange section so we would retain this but in case you need to define any other section type, you can click on the drop down switch here and you can see all the other standard section types that we had discussed before with the exception of general and prismatic. Now, the general and prismatic sections are something that we do not want to cover in this particular series and we will be doing that uh, in more advanced session. Now, we want to assign a custom white flange section. So we retain the type as white flange and the table number noted as that, note that, that the table number is one. Now <clears throat> we click on OK and you can see the user table manager coming up with the current table being table number one with the section type being white flange. Now, say you want do not want this table uh, and uh, you want to remove that and create uh, the table newly so you can always go and click on this delete table button which will delete the existing table the selected existing table so let us click on the delete table and you will see that the table that we had defined is now gone now in order to make this table newly let us click on the new table button once again and again we come up with table one the section type being white flange and we click on ok and now the white flange table or the table number one 
for the white flange section has now been created. Now we want to define the sections which would be the members of these tables. So to define those sections, we need to click on this Add button here. The first thing that we would need to do is to name this section. So let us name this white flange section as WF underscore 300 underscore 500, where WF indicates white flanged section, 300 indicates the width of the section in millimeters, and 500 indicates the depth of the section in millimeters. Now we have to go ahead and try and define the various sectional dimensional parameters. The sectional dimensional parameters D, like D, TF, WF, TW, TF1, WF1, all of this indicates specific dimensions of the white flange sections, which you would understand by referring to the picture that is available on the top. So the first thing that we need to define is the sectional dimension D. If we refer this to the picture here, we'd see that D is nothing but the depth of the white flange section. As per our problem statement, the depth was 500 millimeters. Now we notice that we have to enter the dimension in meters because currently we are working with input units of kilonewton and meters. If you want, you can go ahead and change the dimension units to millimeters, but we won't do that for now. Uh, so we'll go ahead and specify the values in the units of meters. So 500 millimeters for D or depth, which would mean we would need to specify this as 0.5 meters. Or the next sectional dimension that we have is TF. And if we go and refer to the image here, we can see that TF is nothing but the thickness of the top flange. And TF1 is the thickness of the bottom flange. Now, in our case, both the flanges have equal dimensions. So the thickness of both of them would be the same. In our case, remember, the problem dimension was, or the problem statement was that the thickness of the flange was 50 millimeters. So we go ahead and enter 0 0.05 for TF and 0 0.05 for TF1. The next sectional dimension is WF. And if we refer to the image again, we understand that WF is nothing but the width of the flange. In our case, it was 300 millimeters. So we specify that as 0.3. Again, WF1 is the width of the bottom flange. In our case, since both of the flanges have equal dimensions, we also specify the bottom flange also as 0.3 meters. Now, one dimension remains, which is TW. TW is nothing but the thickness of the web. Um, our problem statement says that it was 30 millimeters, so we go ahead and specify 0 0.03 meters. Now, one thing that you definitely have understood is that you can have different dimensions of the top and the bottom flanges, but in our case, we have considered both the flange dimensions to be the same. In addition to these dimensions, uh, we can go ahead and specify these additional dimensions at the bottom. But um, since we are doing a basic course of structural analysis, so we won't go for any further complexities here. Now, it's not sufficient to define the sectional dimensions only one would need to define the various cross-sectional properties. You may remember that we would at least need the cross-sectional area, the moment of inertia to be defined to have the analysis done. However, it would be very cumbersome to go in and calculate the properties uh, by yourself. So we have this calculate button here, which if we press, would automatically calculate all the sectional properties related to the sectional dimensions that we have defined. So let us click on this OK button, and we now see our section 
UPT WF underscore 300 underscore 500 being added to table number one titled as white flange. UPT is nothing but the user provided table. Now you can have multiple sections defined under uh, under the same table. So in case you want to define another white flange section under this table, um, we can go ahead and do this again. So let us click on the add button and say at this point of time, we want the section to be the same as the one that we have defined except for the fact that the depth of the dimensions would be 450 millimeters instead of 500 millimeters. So we start with the name of the section. So we say WF underscore 300 underscore 450. We now go and specify the dimension of the depth as 0.45 meters. The thickness of the flange is 0 0.05 meters. The width of the flange is 0.3 meters. The thickness of the web is 0 0.03 meters. The thickness of flange one, which is same as the thickness of flange, or TF, is 0 0.05, and WF1 is same as WF, which is 0.3. And we click on the Calculate button to um, calculate the sectional properties and click on OK. And we now have both these sections added to the added to table number one. Now remember that table number one uh, re relates to only white flange sections. So if you intend to define a different section type like a custom channel section, you would need to create a new table with reference to the channel section. Now, since this is now being done, we uh, close the user table manager. And now let us say that we want to specify the custom white flange section with a depth of 500 millimeters to the columns. And we want to specify the custom section or the custom white flange section of depth 450 millimeters to the beam. So how do we do that? So in order to do that, we first need to ensure that we are in the properties page and we have the properties whole structure box active. And then we need to click on this user table button here. So let us click on it and we can see that the defined table with its sections are now being available in the properties whole structure box. Now we need to add these sections to the uh, main window of the properties whole structure box. So we click on this section. We see that the material has already been defined as steel. So we click on the add button. We select the second section and we add it to the properties whole structure box again and press the close button. So once that has been done, now the first section we would need to assign it to the columns so we do that and the 300 and the 450 depth uh, section needs to be assigned to the beams so we go ahead and assign the 450 depth section to the beams so we have now completed the assignment of the custom section to our stat pro model so we have completed our discussion on property modeling. In the next session, we will discuss about material modeling. I hope you like the session today. If you have, please do hit the like button and help me to spread it to the other students who are looking for a similar content. So I hope to see you in the next session. Till then, bye-bye.